Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Joanne.com. Today we're going to show you how to apply fleece to any existing crochet project that you have. Today is the ins and outs of applying fleece to your crochet. So you may have noticed online that some charities actually take fleece from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts, of course. They're known for their various selections, just like this Marvel Comics that you see here. This kind of fabric is available at Joanne, and I think that it's just a smorgasbord of great ideas just waiting to be used in crochet. So what we notice with crochet with charity is that some people actually cut up squares for the actual charities, and they just crochet around it. But how do you exactly do that? We're gonna cover that today. There's also an idea where crochet is not always the warmest. It all depends where you live, of course. And the way to make them nice and toasty is to apply fleece to the back of a project in midway of working on your project. So today what we're going to do is show you all the tools that you're going to need in order to do this concept and I'm going to take this marble comics that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and apply it to an existing project right here. So today is all about what you need to know in order to apply fleece to your project. So what you're going to need in order to do this process is that you're going to need a cutting board. You obviously want to save anything underneath the table from being cut, so use a cutting board in order to do that. You're also going to need a long straight edge in order to follow up. There are different kinds of things and all of these tools are available at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts as well. You're going to need a roller cutter and there's different brands out there. This one happens to be a Fiskars and on there you'll see that there's actually a skip cutter on there. So there's going to be one when you go to buy it as a straight cutter just like so but this one is called the skip cutter and what we're going to do is very carefully because these are extremely sharp is that you're going to just change these over. If you're going to get very serious about this I would buy two of these and keep one as a skip cutter and one as a regular cutter so that you don't have to change them out in order to not cut yourself. These are extremely sharp. You're also going to need your crochet hook that you were doing your project with if you're going to do it that way and also you're going to need a much smaller one because the skip cutter creates a small hole within your fleece that you're going to need to get it into and the major hook that we've been working with in order to do our project is too big. You're also going to need a good pair of scissors that have not been cutting anything else. So a nice good fabric pair of scissors. These are by Westcott. Again it's all depending on what you need. So then you're just going to need your yarn in order to go all the way around. But the first thing we need to do is that we need to prepare the fleece in order to be cut properly. So let's do that first. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to prepare the fleece in order to be cut. But what size exactly do we need? So what we want to do is that it doesn't matter if the fleece is upside down at this point or not. This is the good side of it. You'll notice that the back of the fleece is not as defined. You can see it's not as clear of a photo as this one. So this is the side that you'll want to have sticking out of your afghan when you're going to do it. So what we need to do is that we need just to make sure that this is nice and flat and I'm just going to move over and just flatten it back out. And you'll need a nice big surface for that and you're going to take your other project that you've been working with and you want to lie it down on top of the project. So you can either measure it and cut it or you can lay it down. So the goal for you at this point, let me turn this for your convenience so you can see it upside in your direction. So the goal is, is that you want to be able to save your fabric from using too much fabric. So you want to get close to the edge of what you have here but you don't want to go all the way because you don't want the writing that appears with the licensing to be on the project. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to lay it nice and flat and we're going to prepare this to be cut and we have to make sure that the fleece is laying nice and flat and this project here is the size that you're going to want it so it doesn't want to buckle when you're done. So the next thing we need to do is that we need to cut the actual fleece in order to match. So what you want to do is that you want the fleece to be about one inch bigger than the entire project itself. So I've got about one inch over on this side. I've got writing from the marble here that I'm going to cut out and then I've got a little bit extra here in the top. I also want to make sure that the design in the fleece is going to match exactly what I want. So make sure that it's lined up properly. So what we have here is that we have this roller blade that we're going to roll but currently there is a skip cutter on there and we're going to change that out. These things actually kind of scare me. So you could either use uh, pinking shears if you want to but if I was to do this on a more uh, long term basis I would actually have one blade or one tool for each just to make sure that I don't have to change these very often. Now I'm not trying to say that to be uh, making anybody afraid. I'm just being honest. So here's what the skip cutter looks like here and let me just walk up to the camera and show you what it looks like. 
So here are the two blades that we're going to be using and so this is a roller blade here, rotary blade and it's solid and so therefore when I go to roll it, it'll cut everything that is in the way. This one here is called the skip cutter and right where there is no blade at all, it leaves that so that it's not cut. So right where it has the points is exactly where it's going to cut into the fleece as you go. So you'll need a roller cutter as well as a skip cutter and these are available at Joanne as well. So this is the rotary cutter and this is the blade and all you're just going to do is match it up to the middle hole just like you see here and on the top side that you can see the entire blade you're going to apply the guide and this uh, prevents you from getting your hands caught into it as you're rolling it so it stays on the top side and goes all the way through the tool just like so and then all you're just going to do is take the other one and there's a screw that's coming out of the back and you're going to put that on and then that protects you from accidentally cutting yourself. Just like that. So when you go to use this all you're just going to do is that you're going to push this down and it releases it down into the blade and when you're not using it just simply push the button and it snaps back up so that you don't have to hurt yourself when it's not in use. So what I'm going to do now for you is that I'm going to apply my cutting board underneath the project. So just slide it up underneath so it protects your tabletop and now it's just about one inch. You know what? It's fleece. It's very forgiving if you've screwed this up in any way and laying down your straight edge you want to go about one inch away from the actual edge of the project just like you see here. So I know it's hard to see from that particular angle and all I'm just going to do is that I'm going to take the roller cutter and just glide it along but I'll bring you up closer to see that. So with my blade down and it's about one inch I'm just kind of eyeing it up and all I'm just going to do is take my roller cutter and just open it so it clicks down and I'm just going to go right to the top and I'm just going to roll just following the edge pushing down very firmly. It's not one of those ones where you want to go over it twice so just follow it along and stop when the board runs out. And so if I pull it away at this point this should be a nice clean cut as you see and you know what if you don't push down hard enough you do end up with that but because it's at the end not a big deal. So it's nicer to have a nice straight edge to work with and what you want to do is trace your whole project like that and then we're going to deal with the corners because there's a special technique for that. Before we change to the skip cutter we need to use the solid one one more time. So right in the corners if you've ever wrapped Christmas presents and you have stuff left over when you go to do the fold you'll notice that you'll have extra paper left over. Same thing with fleece. So what you want to do is that your board will be marked in one inch and if you don't have a board just mark it about one inch and just eye it up like this and just simply cut that out. And you'll want to do all four corners like that. So what you're doing is you're removing out the final piece like this so when it folds over you don't end up with a big uh, bunch of fabric in the corner. Okay so now that all four sides are cut with the chamfer on the end we need to change out the blade from being the rotary cutter to the skip cutter and very carefully just undoing the contraption and putting this uh, the rotary cutter aside somewhere safe that you won't hurt yourself with it and it just all comes apart. So once I've taken off the back the guide will just pop off. I've never cut myself with one of these. It's just I'm very cautious and then you take out the blade and put it somewhere safe. So now we're going to switch it back out and we're now going to put the skip cutter on and now the skip cutter is going to create the holes in the fleece. So lining it back up to the hole of the actual cutter just like you see. So it's got the hole. You put the guide back on and then just put it onto the back like so. Just screw it back on and again I would recommend you get two of these tools instead of having to do this all the time because then you can really whip through a lot of charity projects really quite easily and once everything is nice and secure in the skip cutter is then available to you and this is what it looks like and then when you pop it out you can see that it's going to skip and cut certain holes on an equal pace. So let's uh, begin to show you how to do this. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a practice session. So if I were you and you were me, the first time I ever did it, it was a good time I did it. I was very lucky but I actually screwed up somewhere. And with the skip cutter, because it skips, what happens is, is that you can only ever rotate across an item one time. That's it. You got one time to push heavy and to cut all the way through in order to make it work. You can never do it like this, like a pizza roller. Okay, because what happens is that these rollers, which happened to me when I did it, if they change where they're positioned and where they're cutting, you actually could actually cut your project right out. So it depends on where the blades are coming down. So what we have to do is that when we do this, we have to go that one inch in from where we were. So we actually did one inch extra of the project and we're gonna go one inch in and we are going to use your ruler just like you see and all we're just going to do is that we're going to go right completely across the project and you will hear it. Do you hear that? It's the actual snapping of the fabric and so when you're going to lift it up and you're not going to see anything that is cut and that's because it has actually been microscopic cuts as we go all the way across but let me show you a close up. So I'm just going to put the light right above me. So what happened is, is that I just cut it and you can't even really see it when you actually see it down but if you pull it, you can see the holes that you could just cut and now because it's fleece, it's awesome, right? So you can see it's all the way through. So with the smaller crochet hook that I'm using, a three millimeter, uh, what I have here is that you can see that I can stick a crochet hook evenly throughout all the holes. So when you're going to crochet this, all you just got to do is just pull the project back a little bit. It exposes the hole and you can stick in the crochet hook. So the skip cutter is a really great way to be able to speed your way up in order to do it. So if you ever wanted to do a project of just um, just like fleece with a crochet border, all you just got to do is skip cutter about one inch in and then just we're going to fold it and then you just use those holes that you created in order to create the foundation as you go all the way around and you get used to actually being able to pull it apart and being able to see it. So if you pull too much like crazy pull then you will just literally tear your project but because this is fleece and the way that it fleece is made you can pull on it pretty good and you can have your stitches exposed really quite easily without really any hassle. So a skip cutter is definitely the way to go. So here's an example of the fabric and we have it cut as you can see if you pull it a little bit you can see all the holes that are exposing as you go along so it looks like it's perforated right because it is. So what we have is that this is the good side of the project this is the wrong side it's not as clear. So if you are working on this what you have to do is that you have to make sure this fold is going towards the back side just like you see. So if you're doing that then this will appear here and this here is the back side so it up here next to your crochet project. Also if you are working on this and you're not applying a back on this at all make sure you're also folding it towards that side as well so that you have a nice clean look on the front side of the project. So you have two options at this point. I've seen people with looking at the back side and what they do is that then they fold it up because that's the right way to do it and they fold it up towards them and then they start going in the holes and they start working their way across. The way that it's folded right here that you see is not natural for the way that the yarn pulls on itself. So what happens I find with myself is that it wants to unfold itself as you're being able to crochet. So what I would recommend to you is that look at the good side and what I want you to do is that I want you to fold it away from you so it's underneath. So you won't see it but there's a reason for it and I'll show you that in just a moment. So using a smaller crochet hook, this is a three millimeter, it's much smaller than the five and a half that I've been working with, you're going to create a slip knot and all you just want to do is that you want to expose the very first holes that you can see and so you don't want one that's partially cut, you just want the one that's full and you're going to fold this over, okay, so just fold it just like this and you are going to wrap the yarn over it just like so and pull through. You're going to chain one and then you're going to single crochet into that same one just like so. And so what happens now is that the fold is now permanently into the stitch and behind. This is the bad side of the project so the wrong side so that's where you want it to go. So you can just see the next one is just ready for you to go into so just slide your hook in so we're just going to single crochet. So to advance we have to do a chain one. Because it's a smaller crochet hook than normal then you in order to get the same kind of gauge that you're working with currently you want to chain one and then go into the next hole that's available to you. Make sure the fold is over and single crochet. The loose end that you're working with I want you to make sure you're trapping underneath. So chain one, 
So just coming in, so just going to the next hole, just push it through and make sure that this loose end stays towards the back side of the project so it gets hidden. So what's happening here is that the fold is staying towards the back side of the project that you can't see and you just work your way across your project with just single crochets in order to bring balance to it. So this is kind of how you would do it if you were not applying a back to your uh, existing project. This is how you can apply a border to something that's fleece and then you can add more to your uh, borders after this is completed. So just make sure you single crochet, chain one and once you come to a corner if you have that all you're just going to do is chain two and then advance and then continue to fold. Remember we had this cut so if we just uh, did that example of that it'd be cut like an inch and it would be folded and then the other one you just follow it straight down as you'd be able to do the turn. So this is how you would apply that but we're going to go back to our project now and we're going to skip cut the existing blanket and then we're going to continue along in order to do it because we're going to go even further of attaching th uh, the sample right to the existing back of, it, of a project that's already done. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to cheat the system. So I put my cutting board aside for now and I've just taken an empty box that I have and I'm just laying out my box flat. Reason for it is that I want to use the entire cut. So I don't want to shift this board because a skip cutter, if you misalign in any way, the holes will be misaligned. So it doesn't matter if you're looking at the front or the back side at this particular point. It's when you go to crochet it for the first time, that's when it matters. So we're going to just grab our straight edge and skip cutter and we're just going to lay it out on top of the cardboard and all I'm trying to really do is save my table. So what we have is that we have done an actual cut on the edge and it was one inch from the corner to the to the where it's cut and it was just a straight diagonal. So what I want to do is as I want to lay it down and right where that corner chamfer is I want to lay it down and this particular ruler that I have is one inch. So all I'm just going to do is just very firmly I want to push it through and cut my fabric at the same time. So I'm kind of concentrating at the same point and once I get close do not pick it up. You'll be sorry. So just move your ruler push down hard on the ruler and continue to do your cut. I learned the hard way, tell, I'm telling you. So I can actually see the cut here and you can actually see in the cardboard I can see where I've cut as well. So all I'm just going to do is now rotate it to the next one and again lay down my ruler and start off on the edge and stop, move the ruler and keep on going. So my entire fleece has now been uh, skip cutted and I can actually see it also here so if I pull it a little bit away I can see where it is actually happening as well. So now it's about applying the border to it so that I can attach it to my crochet project. And again, so let's start doing this blanket. So where am I going to start? So you'll notice that we started when we rolled all the way to the edge and out. Now you did that on both sides so when you go to pull this side you'll see that there is if you can really see it here you'll see that there's holes there. But if you pull in the other direction you can see that about a one inch in there's holes in the other direction going this way. So when you go to start what you want to do is you want to fold it towards the back. Okay so this is the wrong side of the project and you were going to start so if you pull it apart I can see that there's the holes that are on this edge here, right here and this is here where the other holes are and that's where I want to start. So I don't want to start on an edge and I want to fold it back. I'm going to take my yarn and with the slip knot I want to apply it to the hook and I want to pull through. Okay and then I want to chain one and then going back into the same one I want to single crochet. 
Okay, so you can see that where I started, it's not right on the edge of this one here. So I'm now gonna chain one, and now I'm just gonna move along the edge. Okay, and if you can't see it, just kind of force your hook to where you think it is, because chances are your hook will just fall right into it. And you're just gonna go into the next one, making sure you go back, like the yarn is backward, and then just single crochet, chain one, and keep on moving. So just keep on moving down. Sometimes it's easy to see the um, holes, and it all depends on the light too, if you can see them as well. But if you can't, just look where the other ones are kind of spaced out, and then chances are the next one is in the same kind of spacing distance. So just kind of coming down, going through, single crochet, chain one, and then coming back into the next one. So when you get to a corner, what's gonna happen is that you're going to chain two, and then you're just gonna continue. So you'll fold down the other side here, and you'll do the uh, turn, and then come down the other side, and you're gonna do that for all four sides. So please do that, and I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you get to a corner, just like you see here, you wanna look for where those holes are coming down this seam, and that's where you're going to stop. So you're not gonna go all the way to the edge, just like you see here. So all you're just gonna do at this particular point is that you're going to fold, and I can't go any further because when I go to do that, this one is here. So chain two, so instead of chaining one, chain two, and then start working down the holes in the other direction going down and then just fold back. And because the way that you cut the chamfer is that when it goes to fold down in the back, it won't be a lot of extra uh, fabric there. So now you're just gonna work your way down the other side, and you're gonna do that every time you hit a corner in order to get it to sit flat. So you're just gonna stop exactly where the fold is going to begin, just like that. So continue to do that all the way around. So when you get all the way back around, you're gonna be on the final corner, just make sure you chain two and then slip stitch to the beginning and then fasten off. So you're gonna fasten off completely and you're gonna get your other project ready and you're now going to do this. Now if you were doing a blanket and you just wanted to finish this off, just weave in the edges nicely and you now have a new fleece blanket with the crochet edge. Instead of doing any kind of sewing, you have a nice crochet edge and that's kind of how you would do that. But we're gonna continue to move on and we're gonna attach this now to the back of the existing blanket in order to continue along to adding fleece to your crochet. So let's get prepared and let's begin. So what we have to do is that we have to lay down the good project that you want face down, okay? The reason for it is that when we go to crochet, and I wanna be paying attention to what is the upside in this, and all I'm just gonna do is that I'm going to face it down like this. Now the other project that we have, the fleece project, I want to have it face up. But I wanna pay attention to where the characters are so that they are facing in the same direction if you're using it. So see how the characters are facing away from me? So when I go to pick this up, the pow should be up and the characters will be in the same direction. Now the reason why I've chosen this to be on my front side is that we want to maintain what we already see. So what we see at this particular point is that this is the right side of the crochet project. So if I start with the other side first, what's gonna happen is that the border attaching is gonna appear on the wrong side. So we're gonna go right into a corner, okay? And I want to attach my yarn with a slip stitch. So create a slip knot first. And going in, so go right into the chain two space of the fleece itself and put it on and pull through and through. So it's pulling through both. Just lock it with a chain one. And into that same one, I want you to put in three single crochets. So that allows you to turn the corner. So whenever you hit the corners on these, you want to do that. So what you have to just mi be mindful is that it's just eyeing it up and making it look good. So what you have to just do is that you come to the next stitch available to you. So right in the front blue. And then in the back, what I want to do is I don't want to go into the chain one space or where it's attaching, okay? And I want to continue to go in and just single crochet. So it advance one, so I'm not chaining one, I'm just single crocheting and matching it. 
So what I want to pay attention to is that I, I'm just eyeing it up to make it look good. So the skip cutter doesn't know the hook size that you used and it really doesn't matter. The goal is is that you're going to try to get it as evenly as possible. So for example say that the um, fleece is off by a little bit. You can go into the exact same stitch in the front and advance one stitch in the back. So just go up one more and you can really work it in and make it fake it look make it like you can make it really look good. So what you want to just do is want to keep an eye on how you're progressing across and you want to make sure that when you get to the other side that you're getting it as close as you can to the very end and you want to do that. So when you get to the other side you want to put three single crochets right into the corner and keep on advancing all the way around and this will permanently attach but we're not quite done at that point. So what we'll do is that we'll continue to attach keep eyeing it up and making it look good and just uh, do a single crochet attach from the front to the fleece. So now what we have to do for the final step is that we have the fleece attached all the way on the outside but you'll notice that the fleece is loose from the crochet project. So right where you've done joints in the project as you can see you want to attach that and go right through the project right through the fleece. So using a spare piece of string leave an extra long tail and it'll make sense in just a moment and create a slip knot. On the other side put in a really sharp needle. This is take number two because my needle wasn't sharp enough. So what we want to do is go down through the project, right through the fleece on the other side, okay, and pop it through, but don't pull it all the way through because you want to go up through a different spot and back out to the other side once again. And what this will do is it will hold the fleece to the project. So you're going to pull through and that slip knot that we created we're just going to feed it through and lock it. And just tie it one more time just through the top of the project only. You don't want to wreck the back picture so don't go through more than once and just tie it. So now remember to hide in your loose ends you're going to travel through the project a total of three times. So back through the project once twice and three times. So once you have that one done you can just cut it right down into the project and then you have that extra long tail that I've asked you to leave and you're going to do the exact same process and get it right down into the project and cut it out and you'll never see it. And then on the back of the project, so you'll do that, on the back of the project you will see really carefully, see it's almost impossible to see uh, where it's joining and this will hold the fleece back to the project. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd, we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye. <laughs>